to the AI for Java Developer Series. Today, I'm joined by Ruth Yabuku, who will talk to us about building AI systems responsibly. Ruth, could you give us a quick introduction and tell us a bit about our topic today? Sure, Ian. Um, in our session today, I'm going to be talking about building AI systems with Java responsibly. So to begin with, I'm going to give an introduction into what responsible AI is, um, why we need it. Um, then we're going to get into if you're building AI applications um, using Java, how to uh, monitor, um, detect, and mitigate any content that could potentially be harmful to the end user, so to individuals or society, that sort of thing. Um, then the next segment, I'm going to go into talking about um, Azure safety, um, content safety system, which basically what it does is uh, it gives you an opportunity to configure um, when you have your user prompts and also uh, responses coming from um, your AI models, how to configure that so it does catch uh, content that could be toxic to the end users. So let's say violence and also the severity of it. Thank you. Awesome. Sounds interesting. Let's dive in. Hi, my name is Ruth Yakubu, and in this session, we're going to be talking about building AI systems with Java responsibly. Now, we live in a new, exciting um, stage where um, AI is innovating at a very rapid pace. We're seeing a lot of breakthroughs, um, especially around uh, open AI, generative AI, um, that sort of thing. And we're also seeing traditional AI um, models, um, custom um, machine learning models also advancing. So with all of this, um, another shift that we're seeing is a lot of companies now, everybody is scrambling to figure out how do I integrate, uh, let's say open source AI, chat GPT, into the process that I'm doing or my company, what are the business process? How can I make my work a little more efficient um, and also get a competitive edge? Another area that we're seeing is society's response. Um, people are super excited uh, about the new um, uh, open AI breakthrough. Um, but at the same time, with all of these uh, excitement also raises uh, new concerns uh, and scrutiny around um, the safety uh, or uh, the need to have uh, regulatory uh, regulations around um, AI. Um, as a result, we're also seeing, well, there are some industries um, such as uh, healthcare and financial services that already um, have regulations around um, AI, um, but we're also seeing governments step in to figure out, okay, how can we regulate um, all of these technologies? So. With all of this, we hear the term responsible AI. So what does responsible AI mean? Um, when we're talking about responsible AI, um, we're talking about uh, building applications that are fair, inclusive, reliable, safety, um, and have privacy. Um, also are able to um, have some level of accountability and also transparency. So with all of that, um, a lot of people will think, okay, this is something that only falls in maybe a data, data scientist um, category. When they're building the models, they need to make sure um, the models are not coming out with any data biases or whatnot. But in reality, um, this also affects um, developers. So Java developers 
um, have to also worry about this because when you have that um, model built, um, you need to build a system around that. There has to be a user interface and it has to be um, user interactive. You have to add a little more business logic into it. So with all of this, um, we're going to talk about, okay, how, what are the tools and services out there to help us build um, Java applications or uh, AI systems using Java more responsibly? In the workflow of using um, Java application and integrating with these, let's say, OpenAI or LLM systems, um, one of the things that happens is you have your application, let's say your Java application, and um, you have a user prompt uh, for, let's say, OpenAI, um, where the user has to prompt or enter uh, a command or instruction in the prompts. Um, that information is sent to the model, and the model is able to generate a response out of that uh, request. So with all of that, um, the question is for a Java developer, what can they do? What is there for them to make sure they're also um, adhering to some of these responsible AI standards? So one of the services that out there um, that um, is very useful, is actually a very useful tool for developers to utilize is to be able to monitor and detect when there's harmful content coming in. So when we talk about harmful content, um, we're talking about, let's say, um, content has uh, sexually explicit uh, content that is not appropriate or has uh, excessive violence in it. Um, so these are some of the areas that um, developers also have bear the responsible of monitoring and be able to um, detect and mitigate the issues when they come into. Um, this is not just with uh, text, but um, it also falls with uh, images as well. So the solution that uh, the Azure services uh, provide is the Azure AI um, content safety service. So basically what the service is, um, the user is able to configure all of that. But the good thing is even on the dynamic uh, response that's coming from the model, the um, users are, I mean, the developers is also able to set these severity guardrails. Anything that is flagged low, medium, high, or severe, um, they'll be able to figure um, what is allowed and what level should it uh, reject any content. So this can be done console or you can also do it via API. So that's a good thing about this. But the, another good thing is um, it doesn't just uh, support text um, in English, you can also uh, support it in other languages. So this is a very good advantage. Um, so after all of this is configured, um, the different levels of um, severity um, that the system should tolerate, when in your application you're dealing with these models, it's able to uh, detect that, okay, this content was flagged uh, as having some kind of risk. Um, and from that, um, you can um, look at the severity level and be able to take action, what the best course of action is. So the good thing about um, all of this uh, capability of putting um, guardrails uh, or content filtering moderation um, to make sure the systems are behaving responsibly 
is um, you can use um, the API um, with the uh, Azure OpenAI um, service, but you can also use it in um, Azure Machine Learning um, Studio, um, where you can use the prompt flow feature that deals with uh, LLMs um, and also like open source uh, LLMs that could be out there. So as you're going through um, your LLMs, you can also put all of these safety guardrails around uh, prompts and the responses that are coming from the guardrails. So the next thing we're going to do is um, look at an example where, um, number one, we are using the open source, um, the, the open AI um, service um, where we're instantiating um, the service that we provision. That's number one. Uh, number two is we give it a prompt. So the prompt that we're giving is we're telling it uh, that give a summary of a movie, Die Hard. So um, when we submit this to the uh, prompt, the prompt to the model is able to return a response back, a summary of the movie, Die Hard. And with this, um, we send the response that the OpenAI service um, gave us, and we sent it to the content safety service. Um, but before we do that, we also tell it that, okay, these are the categories that we want to monitor. So we want to monitor hate, um, sexual content, self-harm, anything that has violence. Um, so when we send that to the content safety service, as we can see, when we look at the JSON file that's um, return, we can see that, hey, under violence, uh, we have a severity. Um, it, it was able to detect um, harmful content, but the severity is at two. So with this one, in the Java application, you'll be able to take action and um, enforce the corrective actions that, um, or whatever business uh, actions that you want to take from there. So these are all the tools and services that are out there um, for um, Java developers uh, to utilize when they're uh, interface or engaging with uh, the Azure Open uh, AI service or uh, integrating with uh, the large language models out there. Thanks for your time, Ruth, and walking us through some of these important considerations. Make sure to check out some of the other episodes in the AI for Java developer series to best equip yourselves to ride the AI wave.